everyone and welcome to the city of brotherly love. It's Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the host city for the fourth annual Health Disparities Convention. I'm Vince Bailey. And I'm Cynthia Miller. Mm -hmm. And the Alliance for Digital Equality is in the house on behalf of uh, Julius Hollis, our CEO and chairman. Welcome. And uh, boy, we were welcomed with a bang. I mean, we kicked off with a great reception. We sure did. We attended the opening ceremonies at the African American Museum here in Philadelphia. Great museum. What a beautiful, beautiful venue. I mean, the displays, the uh, exhibits. And then, of course, the music, TSOP, The Sound of Philadelphia. I danced the night away. And then the next morning, we had to get up early. Exactly. Because it was time to go to work. But yes. great work is being done. Yes, we've been sitting on some great panels here talking about how we can actually reduce health disparities through strengthening and sustaining healthy communities. And of course, uh, our top speaker, we had lots of great keynotes, but I'd say the third most powerful man in Congress, uh, Congressman uh, uh, Clyburn spoke. Let's hear a little bit of that. Amazing, yes. What more inhumane thing could happen to a young couple who get a diagnosis that the child that they recently were blessed with, that child was suffering from ju juvenile diabetes, and then told by the insurance company that they had been paying premiums to for years, that that child can never come on your insurance policies. This bill ended that kind of discrimination. Wow, you can see the passion, uh, the uh, fire uh, Congressman Clyburn has for this issue. Definitely. He's been listening to people. People are calling him and emailing him about how health, this health care reform act is so important for them because they are having some real challenges in keeping their families together mm -hmm. because of health issues. And you're right. I mean, uh, when he get told his story about working uh, with migrant workers, mm -hmm. I mean, he has really, uh, it's, it's not by chance that he's in the position he is. He has earned his stripes, and uh, kudos to him on a great speech. Definitely. The Alliance hosted a great panel, too. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Congratulations. Uh, we had, uh, we hosted a the panel on broadband technology, and we had our very own Thank Shirley Franklin, the former mayor of Atlanta, to moderate that panel. Mm -hmm. and also on that panel, Bart Foster, one of our new coalition members from Solo Health in, in, back in Georgia. Uh, Mario Armstrong, you know, yes. the Dynamo. Uh, it was a great, great panel listening. So, for example, with this Jitterbug phone, you can now dial up, if you chose to add this as a subscription, I'm adding this for my grandmother, in fact, 94-year-old grandmother who uh, is just independent, does not want to hear it, and so uh, she knows how to use this device and she can call this live nurse option whenever we don't have coverage for her uh, 24 hours a day they can translate in english or spanish and she can speak to a registered nurse all of this has paved the way for consumer acceptance of what we're trying to do and that's self-service healthcare and self-service healthcare is really at its infancy but if you think back in the service model it used to be five to seven years ago what can you do for me and it was i want the burger my way at burger king but you know it's changed now and people now they want to know what can I do for myself and they want to take care of themselves they want to empower themselves and Solo Health wants to give you the tools to do that and those small providers that don't have the medical staff or don't, don't have the IT staff in order to support these very expensive electronic health records that require systems and so on they need an alternative we do that through broadband technologies we do that through the public investment that we've already made in products that are available to public health and the federal sector we need to do more. I think we need to get everyone to have more broadband access because that is the wave of medicine, not only with the technology for your banking and so forth, but it is going to be the new way to get this care to more people than we have physicians to currently take care of them. Vince, the, the panel on broadband technology was absolutely amazing. Dr. Norwood, our board member, um, I mean, she was right on it, how we need to know our numbers, we need to take responsibility for our own health. Dr. Alexia Norwood, to be exact, from Detroit, Michigan. I, I'm going to be honest, I had not heard her give a speech like that ever. She and is dynamic. Yeah, she is dynamic. It got everyone on fire, so kudos goes out to her. Mm -hmm. There was another exi exciting uh, panel that took place uh, featuring Congress members, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, Congress uh, Roundtable, and uh, Congressman Honda was on that panel. It was moderated by Donna Christensen, and I got a chance to talk to them and uh, get some up-close uh, comments from them after the panel. We know the disparities, so what this conference is about is how do we really close those gaps in healthcare that 
African Americans and other people of color and a rural Americans uh, experience. And this, in this particular conference, we're looking beyond just a medical model uh, treatment of disease. We're looking at the whole community, the whole environment in which people struggle to try to be healthy. Was it, uh, you know, I was very, very, of course, humbled to be able to talk to the Congress members. Mm -hmm. I was especially uh, enlightened by uh, Congressman Honda, Asian American, wants to reach out to the world, and uh, I just felt real special talking to him. You, on the other hand, got up close personal with a lot of people here at this event. Yes, in fact, I had a great opportunity to speak with uh, Dr. John Maupin from the Morehouse School of Medicine, as well as another sponsor, someone from Amera Health Mercy. So let's take a listen. So when you leave a hospital, for example, uh, one of the things that have to happen, you, it's time for you to go, but you can't go home yet. There are some things that need to be connected, resources connected. And with technology, we ought to be able to do things faster, more efficient, and then be able to make those con communication connections. We know that there are new tools, uh, new ways of using uh, technology, information, data, um, uh, to be able to connect to people the way they are, the way they think. Uh, be able to get those uh, folks to uh, to be able to act in their own best self-interest. And we have to use every tool in the toolbox. Um, and increasingly, uh, many of the most important tools are going to be available to us digitally. There are millions of people who need to hear uh, some of these solutions that these people in, in this conference are, are presenting. So hopefully the Alliance for Digital Equality will be able to disseminate this uh, to as many people as possible. Wow, Cynthia, I don't know if it's your looks because they wouldn't talk to me, but you talked to a lot of people. I spoke to a lot of people, I did. I had a great time meeting a lot of people and just looking at the partnerships that are being formed here. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are collaborating. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate all the collaborations with ADE. In fact, we're excited to announce the formation of our new Digital Empowerment Council here in Philadelphia. Right here in Philadelphia, we are forming a Digital Empowerment Council to talk about the importance of broadband technology, now especially in the, in the area of health, education, economic development, civic participation. So if you or anybody in your community would like to get involved, please check us out. Go to our website, www.adeql.org. You'll be joining a great crew of people from Detroit, Chicago, Houston, Miami, all over the country. People are joining our digital empowerment councils and empowering our communities across the digital divide. So once again, that uh, website? It is www.adeql.org. From Philadelphia, we'll see you next time. Thank you.